Well, what a beautiful morning. It's hard to believe it's winter. I mean, it's it's a bit chilly now, in fairness, but it's really gorgeous. Sun shining, almost clear blue skies. A lot of haze in the distance, I can see, but wow. Anyway, the reason I'm here this morning, I'm close by the Woodstown stream, an area that I don't know a lot about. But I've had uh, an interesting talk with John Coyward and John's filled me in on a little that he knows. And we're both agreed that we would come back again and investigate it more because certainly there's a lot of wildlife in the area, a hell of a lot of birds. When we arrived first, I just hadn't seen so many birds in one place at one time in ages. But it's for further investigation so I will be back and I'm looking forward to it. In the meantime, I'm gonna let you enjoy some of the things that John said to me. This morning I'm on the pathway beside Woodstown Stream, an area that I'm not familiar with. And as you can see, I'm with John Kybert. Now I know John, although not overly familiar with the area, has been here before with some of the volunteers from Litter Mugs and a couple of other groups doing a clean up on the stream. So John, tell me about Woodstown Stream. Well, as you said, I, I don't know a whole lot about it. Saturday was my second time here and I was introduced to it by one of the volunteers who helps out with the uh, Stephenstone Forest. Claire is her name and uh, she took me on a walk on this uh, this area and uh, it's at the back of a big housing estate so I didn't know it existed and uh, some of it's pretty old and as you can see well, you probably can't see at the moment but we're, we're surrounded by lots and lots of holly it's just a fantastic uh, place and there's lots of bird life I presume other wildlife around uh, in the area it's just a bit of a hidden, hidden gem there's certainly no shortage of holly in this area squirrel and John behind me is talking about squirrels. It's, it's right above you. Oh, it's over my head and I can't see it. Okay. He's working his way up through this, the ivy. Let's come back to John and see what other information he has for us. John, I want to ask you some questions about litter mugs. Who actually started litter mugs? When and how did you become involved? Uh, I'm unsure about the exact date. I think 2015, 2016, something like that. Um, and the original founding members would have been uh, Lisa McCauley, Jackie Long, and Peter Daly. There may have been others, but uh, they, they were the they were the ones that I uh, came across in the first place when I joined them. And I joined them in about 2017. Okay, tell me more about the work that you guys do and the cleanups of the River Daughter and White Sound Stream in particular. Yeah, um, the, the main focus of activity for the litter mugs is in uh, Shaw Mulch Park and the Whitestown stream runs through the park and feeds the lakes, the artificial lakes that were made when the park was created. Um, and obviously the Whitestown stream feeds into the Dodder so what we do further up is helping to protect the Dodder and we work with uh, Dodder Action people uh, quite a lot in the Whitestown stream and further up in towards the Jobstown stream in Tallaght. So John, tell me more about the association between both Litter Mugs and Daughter Action because I interviewed Wadik Guy recently and he told me some of it. But tell me a little bit more about how you guys got together and what you do. Well, I think the uh, initial crossover happened when Wadik volunteered with the Litter Mugs on a number of occasions. And um, then other members of Daughter Action uh, got involved. I think actually it might have been Sally, it might have been Sally Lyons who made the first connection because she definitely came to one of our early, the early ones that I was involved with and she's a, a strong member of uh, Daughter Action, a very very active member um, and she's worked in Stephenstone Forest as well. So it's just it kind of evolved over time uh, and I joined Daughter Action myself, I'm a, I'm a fully paid up member and I have the t-shirt to prove it and um, yeah we've just, we've just been it's, working together and we work really really well and I think it's um, some people are litter mugs and some people are daughter action by times it just depends on what the nature of the project that we're working on at the time 
Okay, John, I have another question, which I also asked what it guy when what he allowed me to interview him last week. Why do you believe that so many volunteers are required to keep the rivers and streams clean? Well, that's really simple. There's just so much litter just being dumped into the rivers. Uh, some of it directly, but you know, a lot of it isn't. It's just in the environment, and uh, ultimately. Once the wind will carry it into a river and the river will hold on to it and it'll just deliver it out into the Irish Sea. So um, unfortunately waterways are a great delivery system uh, for, for rubbish from the general environment. Okay, so why do you think all this rubbish is being caused or who's causing it? Well, I suppose you have to go back to source. You have to go back to source. Uh, it's, it's the manufacturers of these products. I mean, so much of it is all plastics um, and excess packaging. It just isn't necessary. Um, so we need to get back to a situation where, uh, you know, we're not producing as much plastic. It's not sustainable. Okay, John, I'm going to ask you a very similar question. Why do you think so many volunteers are needed to clean up all this rubbish? And why is the rubbish there in the first place? I mean, is it just people's bad attitude? Well for sure. There's far more people littering than there are picking up the litter, that's that's for certain. Um, and yeah, I think the Irish society, we, we're not particularly uh, conscious of, of the whole litter problem. I think the manufacturers are just producing tons and tons and tons of plastic and excess uh, packaging material that just isn't necessary. So it's, um, it's, it's just a matter of we have to keep going because the problem is still there and the problem it just doesn't seem to be going away. Yeah, and then there's the other factor that um, when they privatised the whole uh, bin collection service, I don't think it was fully thought through and so many people, there was a major, major protest at the time against these bin charges and um, I think people are still protesting by not paying the bin charges and dumping their rubbish into the environment. And uh, whether we like it or not, whether you, whatever your political views are on that one, I think it's a, the point is it's not working. It's, the current system does not work. It's just producing more and more litter into the environment. Well, John, thanks very much for doing this for me this morning. Everybody knows we're pals, so I'm, I'm a little bit biased, but you've really put your finger on some of the problems and shown me a new area that I haven't seen before. Maybe one day you and I will take a walk along here and investigate the wildlife that's here, the plants, the trees, and whatever else. So thanks again, John. No problems. It was, um, it was a pleasure, and as you're absolutely right, this place is teeming with wildlife and bird life. Now, as John mentioned while I was talking to him there, there's an incredible amount of holly right along this whole area is covered in, covered in holly. Look at this. I'm just walking along and everything on my right is covered in holly. I don't think I've ever seen so much holly in one place in my life. Now, I'm with John Clebert again, close by the Woodstown stream. And to John's right, or my left as we look at John, there's a big pile of rubbish. This was all collected in a cleanup, and John was here for the cleanup. So, John, tell me a little about the rubbish that's beside us. Cleanup organised by the Woodstown residents, and uh, some people from Dodderash and Littermogs came along to give them a handout. This is uh, something they're going to do, I think, on a more regular basis, but hopefully, uh, the, the place will be reasonably clean for a while and they won't have to do it for another little while. But as you can see, we took out quite, a, quite an amount of, of rubbish, all kinds of rubbish. And um, that have built up over the years. I'm always fascinated by the fact that people are so inconsiderate. They never think of anybody but themselves when they dump this kind of stuff. Spoil the rivers, spoil the parks, spoil everything for everybody else. It's an absolute disgrace. So, do you want to say one final word about that, John, before we finish up here today? Yeah, there are inconsiderate people, and then there's the the people who, as I was just showing you earlier on, they pick up their dog poo, put it into a bag, and then toss the bag into the bushes. 
just it's unbelievable. I don't. I just simply don't understand that mentality. Well, thanks again for watching Wildlife Wednesday, folks. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And if you did, I'd be grateful if you'd give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And when you do, don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. If you'd like to buy a copy of my safari book from sunrise to sunset, just follow the link below the video. Till next week, stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands and wear a mask where necessary while continuing to maintain social distancing because we're not quite out of the woods yet. Even me. <laughs> Take care, folks. Bye.